Hello Commanders, I am Commander Ordruin and the topic of this video is what to do when things go south in AX combat. On my previous videos have showcased textbook style kills, things do not always go according to plan, particularly when starting out, and it can therefore be important to be aware of how to deal with different mechanics that can appear during the encounter. In order to showcase the mechanics, I have here found and engaged a Thargoid Cyclops. The behavior of other interceptor variants is similar but generally more deadly. The first thing we will discuss is the swarm and its behavior. In this tutorial series we have so far focused on flacking down and destroying the swarm. Instead of doing that, let us now have a look on what can happen when you don't and discuss the swarm's mechanics. This swarm has two possible states, normal and agitated. These states can be visually identified by the formation of the Thargons. But in this video, you may have difficulty identifying those, so I have included a link to the page describing swarm mechanics on the AXI homepage in the description. Whenever a new swarm is released by the interceptor, it will be in the normal state. In this state, the swarm will chase you and try to hit you with its projectiles. The swarm state will change whenever you fly through it. So, to demonstrate how the swarm behaves in its agitated state, we here perform a flyby and make sure to pass through the swarm on the way. Although I here intended to perform this maneuver, you should generally try not to, as the swarm's agitated state is generally more difficult to deal with. When the swarm is agitated, getting to within 3 kilometers will result in a number of the Thargons performing a suicide missile attack, charging at you at speed. If such a Thargon missile hits you, it can do severe module and hull damage, and if you are hit by a lot of them, it can mean the end of the fight. Because of this, you should ideally get rid of the swarm by flacking it down. However, for more difficult interceptors, an agitated swarm will typically take formations that are more difficult to flack down, and the best thing to do is then to reset the swarm to its normal state by flying through it again. To do so safely, we first bait a missile salvo from the swarm by making sure to get within 3 km range while in reverse key. If your speed away from the swarm is sufficient, the missiles will then expire before they reach you and the swarm will be on cooldown before it can release new missiles, producing a window of opportunity to safely fly through the swarm again as demonstrated here. The swarm is now back in its normal state with its normal flying behavior and we proceed to flag it down. Typically, the swarm is not agitated by intent as we did here, but rather by mistakenly flying through it on an attack run. If you do agitate the swarm during an attack run, you need to make a decision on whether or not to abort that attack run. Generally, it is worth staying and completing the attack run only if you are certain that you will get the heart down before the swarm starts missiling. If not, boost away from the interceptor and either destroy or reset the swarm, as was shown here. The second behavior we will let the Cyclops showcase is the interceptor enrage mechanic. Each interceptor comes with an enrage timer, 6 minutes for the Cyclops, 7 minutes for Basilisks and Medusae, and 8 minutes for the Hydra. This timer starts when you engage the interceptor and will only be reset by destroying one of its hearts. Once enraged, the interceptor will deploy a new swarm whenever the current swarm is destroyed, or immediately if it was already destroyed before the enrage. This is demonstrated here as I have been orbiting the Cyclops for a long time using the beam laser to stay cold. Eventually, the Cyclops therefore enrages and releases a new swarm to replace the one I had already destroyed, and I boost away in silent running to avoid the interceptor's main cannon while building distance. As before, the new swarm is deployed in its normal state and will therefore behave normally unless agitated. So, in order to show the difference when the interceptor is enraged, we again fly through the swarm on purpose in order to agitate it. The swarm is now in its agitated state, which again means that we need to beware of missiles. The difference to when the interceptor was not enraged is that there is now no limit to how many Thargons will go into the missile state. The solution to having an agitated swarm during enrage is therefore to bait the entire swarm 
by letting it come within 3 kilometers while moving away from it. Make sure that the entire swarm has missile before relaxing. If you just briefly move within 3 kilometers of the swarm, it can happen that only part of the swarm missiles and you then need to bait whatever still remains. Once the swarm has annihilated itself by turning into missiles, the interceptor will deploy a new swarm, since it is enraged. However, this swarm will again be in a normal state. Just to demonstrate the repetitive swarm spawns of the interceptor when enraged, we also flag down this new swarm. And when that is done, the interceptor again gets to deploy another free swarm. This means that we cannot fully destroy the swarm when the interceptor is enraged. Instead, the way to proceed in the fight is to get the interceptor out of the enraged state by destroying a heart. To do so more or less safely, we flack down the swarm to a low number of remaining Thargons. We do this in order to decrease the damage we will take if we fly through the swarm and it turns into missiles during the attack run. We then proceed to fly around the swarm while preparing our attack run and during the attack run we must not only keep our orbit but also make sure to avoid flying through the swarm. While this may seem daunting at first, a well-built orbit with an Alliance Chieftain pretty much stays away from the swarm by itself, and if the swarm should get too close, we can avoid it by building speed through boosting. With the heart destroyed, the interceptor reverts to its non-enraged state and we can proceed to destroy the swarm. However, as the swarm was active when the heart was destroyed, the interceptor banks a single swarm that will be deployed once the current one is destroyed as seen in this footage. This means that after dealing with an enraged interceptor, you will always have to deal with two swarms. The one that was deployed during the enrage and the swarm that the interceptor banks upon heart destruction. We fast forward to the next attack run, where the interceptor's lightning attack is now unlocked after the destruction of the first heart. It will deploy this attack with a cooldown whenever you come too close. You can see that the lightning attack is being deployed by the interceptor flashing yellow. In order to avoid the worst part of the lightning attack, quickly move out of lightning range again, possibly by boosting if necessary. While the lightning attack in itself is not extremely damaging to a shieldless ship, it will randomly reboot your modules and also keep you fixated. In the worst case, it will release you at a standstill with your thrusters still rebooting, meaning that it will get several salvos of main cannon fire in before you can do anything to avoid it. If you do get caught by the lightning, particularly when close to destroying a heart, you can use the period of standstill between you and the interceptor to your advantage by getting several free shots in, as demonstrated here. Again fast forwarding to the next attack run, we will now demonstrate how to handle the caustic missiles as well as the shutdown field if you fail to stay cold or above 3 km range during the interceptor's sleep phase after heart destruction. Since I have already destroyed the second heart and avoided having the interceptor deploy a caustic missile, this interceptor has a banked caustic missile that will deploy along with the shutdown field if it manages to establish target lock. We destroy the heart, and as can be seen, the interceptor does not get a target lock until we fire off the gauze cannons and rise above 20% heat. When we finally do, 
because the missile is released and your Kovas will warn you about the detected energy surge at the same time as the interceptor flashes blue, warning about an incoming shutdown field. The solution to both shutdown field and caustic missiles is to boost away in flight assist off. While there is not enough time to build enough range to avoid the shutdown, your velocity will then mean that the interceptor and swarm will not catch you and get a lot of free shots until your systems are back online. The caustic missiles are also relatively slow and boosting away from them will lead to them missing and not applying the caustic effect. When the systems come back online, in this case, we see that both the swarm and the interceptor are at a comfortable distance and we can resume the fight in the normal manner. Finally, once the interceptor is destroyed, we will demonstrate how to get rid of the caustic damage effect applied both by the caustic cloud left by the interceptor as well as by the caustic missiles, should you be hit. Without the use of the contamination limpets, the caustic effect can be removed by increasing our heat and burning it off. The fastest way of doing so is to turn silent running on and fire your gauze cannons, which builds a lot of heat. So in order to demonstrate this, we fly through the caustic cloud to have the caustic effect applied, making your ship's hull bar turn into a yellowish green and flashing along with your covas alerting you to the caustic damage. To not get it applied immediately again, you make sure to fly out of the cloud while turning on silent running and firing the gauze cannons. Once your HUD and covas inform you that the caustic effect has been removed and your hull bar has turned back to its original color, Turn silent running off and pop a heat sink or two in order to lower your heat back below 100% to not take more heat damage than necessary. The caustic effect applied by caustic missiles can be removed in the same fashion, preferably staying away from the interceptor as your heat will light you up once you exit silent running and the interceptor will have no problems in establishing a target lock if you are too close. This concludes this tutorial on different special mechanics of Thargoid interceptors and what you can do to deal with them. I hope to see you in the front lines of the war to come. Glory to mankind.